Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Tales, Outer Tales, Space, Tales, Space, Tales, Space, where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would like to give a quick thanks to our Tier 5 channel members and patrons. Fallen Angel, Buzz Killington. Thank you again. Now on to the story. Story number one. Humans are weird. Personal protection. Written by Betty Adams. Ah yes, Ranger Third Class Smithy. Commander Third Tool called from the window over his door. Could I talk to you for a moment? Ranger Smitty tried to hide his wince before he turned and smiled up at the base commander. Sure thing, boss, he said, remembering to let his grin show in a flash of white teeth against a dark skin. Winged on the base were pretty dang stubborn about integrating properly, as they put it, and took offense if humans' personnel tried to restrain and otherwise hide their normal reactions. Granted, when the base commander asked to talk to you in that tone, it was never for a reason to grin, but politeness and all that. He tried not to slouch or slink as he walked into the commander's office. Please, have a perch, Commander Third Troll said with a gesture at the office furniture, then looked like a chair that had been built in a dock from instructions in a language the carpenter didn't fully understand. Ranger Smitty eased down onto the flattest surface and gave the commander a strange smile. The winged gave his sensory horns a quick rub with his wing hooks before giving Ranger Smithy a toothy smile. How have you been? the commander asked. Ranger Smithy winced at the high-pitched tone, but held his smile. Pretty good, pretty good, he said. Have you found your work satisfactory and fulfilling? the commander asked. I love working with the big sensor sets, Ranger Smithy said with full honesty. Has your supervisor being as helpful as she might be? The commander pressed. Date sister. Ranger Smitty blinked in surprise. Yeah, she's great. She's always right out there with me. Not much anyone else on the base can do for the big rigs. Those skinny little bug arms of hers are pretty strong, all things considered. She provides you with all the personal protective equipment that you need. The commander went on. Ranger Smitty gave a snort of laughter. More than enough he said. I don't use half the junk she packs into the rigs for the field day. The commander third troll's black eyes narrowed meaningfully and Ranger Smitty gave a nervous twitch. About that, commander third troll said at what sounded like it was supposed to be a soothing tone. I do notice that you are not using the recommended amount of work clubs. Ranger Smithy gave a non-committal grunt and tried not to eye the door for an escape route. The little buggers were fast and could read human directional signals like a book. In fact, Eight Sister has lodged several complaints about this, the Commander Thurtrell said. Bug folk should have figured out we can take a little damage by now, Ranger Smithy muttered, slipping into his chair and trying to hide his hands under his thighs. The Commander kept up his smile as he held out his wing hooks. May I uh, see your hands? he asked. Ranger Smitty hesitated, but really couldn't think of a good reason to refuse. So he pulled his hands out from under his thighs and put them on top of the commander's raised platform. He was somewhat satisfied to see the commander winced as he skipped forward to examine Ranger Smitty's hands. They were perfectly normal hands as far as Ranger Smitty could see. He had broad fingers that squared off at the ends. Nine of his ten fingers were perfectly healthy. And the one that wasn't, well, wasn't there really, was showing every sign of growing back in a normally. However, the commander's eyes seemed to be tracking every scratch and scrape on his skin. There were a few of them. Working on the big sensor unit wasn't easy on the old graspers after all. Commander Third Troll glanced up at him meaningfully and produced a measuring tape from one of the folds at his wing. Ranger Smitty arced an eyebrow at him, and the commander very carefully laid the tape along the length of the worst hitting cut. The tape stretched out for nearly a full wingspan in length, and its widest section threatened to engulf the thin tape. Is this normal, Ranger Third Class Smitty? 
Commander Sertro asked with a glitter at his eyes. Normal, Ranger Smitty hedged. Well, uh, that depends, Ranger Smitty. Commander Sertro said with a sigh and recoiled the measuring tape. Before you answer, please be aware that I have full access to the university records. Ranger Smitty squirmed a bit and then sighed. No, sir, he said. It is not recommended. That's not what I asked, Commander Thirdroll observed. Well, where I come from, this is normal, Ranger Smithy said with a shrug. You should have seen my daddy's hands, but it ain't exactly recommended. Very true, Commander Thirdroll accepted. On this base, we do consider it best to go with the recommended use of personal protective equipment. Ranger Smitty heaved a sigh. Wear the gloves, Ranger Third Class Smitty, the commander said firmly. I'll wear the gloves, Ranger Smitty agreed. And do recall that even if Eight Sister doesn't accompany you, your hands are visible when you get home, Commander Third Troll said. Yes, sir, Ranger Smitty said as he stood up and gave a brisk nod before leaving. End of story. Story number two. The Dancer, written by LG Father Anthracite. Lurxia sat in the couch, surrounded by others from the Galactic Legal Quorum. There were chairs, stools, couches, pads, nests, and even a couple small liquid filled pools. Each sported a group of sofas and various GLQ member species. There was a low murmur of subdued conversation. Slowly, the lights faded to a comfortable dimness. The curtain at the front of the auditorium was suddenly awash in light. Slowly, it parted at the center to reveal a single figure on stage. Luxia was intrigued. These uh, humans were relatively new to the GLQ. Luxia knew little about them, as the and the podmates were diplomats. They had access to some general physiological data, as well as environmental survey data from Earth. As far as Luxia could see, they were a mammalian higher primate species, not uncommon in the galaxy. However, they came from a death planet with gravity nearly twice the galactic standard for the GLQ. Zir expected them to be shorter and wider than Zir was. They were... The humans were just under two meters tall, skin the color of full drell trees, and a dark brown. On top of its head, a long black fur had been bundled into a paw. It was stocky, nearly 45 centimeters wide at the hips and shoulders. It stood still, waiting. Once the talking had completely stopped, the dancer on stage stood on her tiptoes, raising herself an additional 15 centimeters up and lifted her short arms above her head, holding her hands in what Luxia supposed was a set pose. After a few moments, the music started. Luxia had expected the movements to be heavy and brusk, as the creature came from a place where the most of the audience would have a hard time supporting their own weight. They were surprisingly smooth and graceful, and fluid in a way that Luxia couldn't quite understand. How could they move so lightly? The dancer, a ballerina, as they were known on earth, left and danced across the stage, contorting her body in ways that Luxia could never accomplish. Her body bent from side to side, front to back, her head nearly touching the stage at some points. Her legs were just as active. Her feet often flew above her head. Her arms moved in graceful arcs around her torso. She would leap into the air, reaching several meters into the air, as if the lighter gravity of the GLQ station could barely hold her down. She landed with a smoothness that belied the strength of her legs, all in time with the music. Luxia sat transfixed, the power and grace of it breathtaking. The ballerina used every inch of the stage, covering its full width and depth several times. The music seemed to go on for ages, so long, in fact, that Luxia began to worry for the dancer. Surely she would become exhausted and collapse. 
but the girl showed no signs of stopping, nor even slowing down. Each step exact, each motion prescribed and delicate arc. Finally, the music slowed and stopped. The dancer came to a rest, curled into a ball at the center of the stage, legs folded to the torso, arms wrapped around the legs, head down. The curtain closed. The audience sat in stunned silence. This was a death water. This, this paragon of grace and motion, crude, over-muscled, wall-like death worlders. No, no, Luxia would not believe it. The curtain opened again, and Luxia saw the dancer again. She was standing on the stage, a single spotlight in the darkness, bathing her in a halo of light. Now, under the spotlight, standing in one place, Luxia saw how the muscles rippled under her skin, how they moved smoothly and with a fluidity that seemed almost unnatural. Luxia remembered. Humans were hunters, on a planet where everything vied for dominance. Suddenly, such grace and stamina made more sense. The dancer bowed low, head nearly touching the floor again. A human had approached the stage from the audience and handed her a small bundle of flowers, presumably a ritual from Earth. The other two humans in the audience clapped their hands together. Nuxia was suddenly snapped back to the present. Zer, too, began to applaud, thrumming their throat in a fashion of their people. Across the auditorium, others also applauded in their breathtaking performance. The dancer smiled and waved at the audience. She bowed again and the curtain closed. Tales of death will dancers would soon spread across the GLQ. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.